With the White House's major elections reform push dead on arrival and another one of Democrats' big promises on the cutting room floor, securing black voters' midterm support seems less like a foregone conclusion and more of an increasingly uphill battle for President Biden and the Democratic Party. In a November op-ed for Newsweek, our next guest argued even before Biden's flailing voting rights push that black voters are well overdue for a divorce from the Democratic Party. Denise Long writes, quote, the question hanging in the air from black America is a simple one. What have you done for me lately? And the answer is not a damn thing. It's time for black Americans to break up with the Democratic Party. If they want our votes, let them earn it. Newsweek contributor and business consultant Denise Long joins us now to discuss. Welcome to Rising, Denise. Hi, but yeah, thank you. Nice to be with you all. So tell us a little bit about the op-ed, what prompted it, and um, what is your message that you're trying to convey? Yeah, thank you for the question and thank you for having me on. I think what prompted it is just seeing the ways in which uh, the Democratic Party has absolutely neglected black voters um, for a generation or two. I think what also prompted it was my seeing the uh, proposal for almost half a million dollars per illegal immigrant per family. I think that uh, that amount and the idea of that really galvanized many black voters who have as descendants of slaves, right? I'm seventh generation American, who have been fighting for both our rights as well as um, our civil rights, as well as protections from so many things in the United States. And so to see that happen and to see it be seriously considered was offensive. That does not mean that there aren't ways in which we could have taken better care of those who broke immigration immigration laws, but to to propose that in this context was just highly offensive and quite inappropriate. And we do uh, deserve uh, a party that will provide for us as they do for all Americans. Is, uh, you know, Denise, is the, uh, go ahead, Kim. Well, I, I, I totally agree with you that the Democratic Party doesn't really do anything for black voters. They seem to use black voters as, you know, they're, they're just like, uh, sort of like what Hillary Clinton did in the 2016 election where she took advantage or, or for granted, I would say, the Rust Belt voters. And I think Democrats often take for granted black voters and they say, oh, you're with us, you're one of us. But my question would be then, what are Republicans doing to court black voters? Because you know it's always been odd to me that Republicans didn't do more, haven't been doing more, considering so many black Americans, I believe actually the majority identify as conservative, uh, when you ask, when you when you have conversations with a lot of Black Americans, a lot of their values are in line with Republicans, but Republicans don't seem to be capitalizing on that at all. So where do Black voters go if it's not with the Democrats, who are at least acting like they're friends? Right. Yeah. So there are a couple of things. One, I think Americans need to realize that descendants of slaves, right, we're talking about people with three to 20 generations invested in this American dream, are not asking for a handout. What we're looking for is the security of the citizenship rights and the civil rights that we had been promised, that we are due, and that have not been delivered. And so what I have found, being that the Republican Party is the only party that I am a paid member of and have been engaged with, is that we in America, America, black Americans and white Americans particularly, right, are not still, are not comfortable with having conversations with each other. We're not comfortable uh, understanding and engaging, engaging with each other. You know, they say Sunday is the most uh, divisive uh, day of the week, the most segregated day of the week. And that really says something about the ways in which we continue to fight something as basic as the true history. So, what I am calling for to your and Batya's question is I'm calling for people to start to have conversations and get to know each other. There are ways in which black voters are reticent to engage in Republican spaces because they anticipate a level of uh, racism and conversation that they don't want to engage in voluntarily, right? There are so many ways in which there are racial microaggressions that happen. I think Republicans are reticent to uh, engage with black voters because they also anticipate that black voters don't want to hear what they have to say. So what I see is just this gross, multi-generational and unnecessary inability to have dialogue and conversation. And if we are going to write this nation, we're really going to have to be okay with being uncomfortable, realizing that everything we want to be quite cliche, but true, is on the other side of our discomfort.
Yeah, is, is it an issue uh, for Republicans of, you know, finding out what or, or treating black Americans like they're different and distinct and, well, these are their issues? I, like, I don't know if that's the, that's the way to go. I, I, like, I've seen, I feel like the Democratic Party sometimes goes awry when, like, well, we, you know, Hispanic voters are very important to us, so we're going to be so immigration, immigration, immigration focused. And then they find out that many, many Latino voters don't, are, are, right, are not for illegal immigration. So they can be some of the most hardline people there are. And they, they were, you know, certain, certain Latino populations were increasingly attracted to Donald Trump. They agreed with some of those policies, maybe not all of them, maybe not the rhetoric, that kind of thing. You know, we, we find, uh, or we are finding that there, there are a lot of, uh, Black Americans, the Democratic Party is trying to speak to on uh, on criminal justice, on police violence, but then they also find that a lot of people who live in those communities, Black Americans, are worried about crime. They are worried about crime. So, it, right. how does it, how how should a, a party trying to court these voters proceed? Yeah, so excellent question. So here's the idea. There are distinct needs among populations in the United States of America, and there are synergies within our needs. Every person alive wants security, both in terms of their physical being, their health and well-being, as well as economic security to make ends meet and provide for their families, including enrichment opportunities and not just, you know, food, water, shelter, clothing, right? Here's the other piece. Black American voters, and let me be more specific, I mean, multi-generational Black Americans, descendants of slaves who are the majority of Black America do have unique needs. I mean, let's face it, the 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment, as well as the civil rights legislation was largely due to our people, our ancestors, and my parents, right? My mother drank from a segregated black water fountain in the heart of Mississippi, right? So there are unique needs that we have as multi-generational black Americans that a black immigrant who got off of a 757, right, does not have. And there's a way in which we flatten, so to speak, blackness and make it so that every black person is seen as the, as the same, which helps us miss the needs of multi-generational Americans. There are ways in which we think the needs of white America broadly are different from the needs of black America broadly. So here's what I want to see. I want to see more competence among all leaders, whether Republican, Democrat, Independent, Libertarian, Green Party, or whatever, where they're able to really analyze and speak to the needs of the diverse constituencies of America. And particularly, I want a realization of the descendants of slaves, citizenship, and civil rights legislation in a way that we haven't had before. You spoke about immigration, and that that is, uh, gosh, a, a can full of worms that we have to get under control. And Biden and the Democrats are directly responsible for that debacle. Yeah, so what I'm hearing from you and what you wrote about in the piece as well is what you want to see is a competition for these votes, right? You want to see the parties actually have to offer people something in exchange for those votes rather than taking them for granted, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Offering something in exchange, for example, right, we need to see immigration under control. We know that immigration lowers the wages um, for black Americans, particularly those without a high school diploma, of which there are quite a few. And it's not just black Americans. It's also white Americans. Right. What we also want to see is uh, Democrats and others get away from this idea that uh, this diversity, equity, inclusion idea that we are all the same. In reality, we are not. Now, to Robbie's point, that doesn't mean that we other people, what it does mean is that we speak to the specific needs. What I want to see is that Democrats and the executive particularly exercise his authority, his constitutional authority to create uh, regulations that actually deliver on the laws that the country has put forth for descendants of slaves. So yes, and I want to see that across parties. We can't have an electoral system where every two to four years people get left behind in large swaths of the American constituency. Yeah. Well, Denise, thank you so much for sharing your perspective with us. Really interesting. Glad to be here. Thank you. We'll have more Rising right after this.